Today, I am talking about viral content, and I gotta say, speaking to this room is really kind of nerve-wracking. The reason why I say that is because I've been a, a, an SEO Moz member for years, and I know what you guys are capable of. I know a lot of you in the audience, and you're really, really smart people, but I kind of sit back and go, okay, but I get to talk to a group of friends because you all have been friends of mine for years. Um, I, I, lo I love this event because I really get to talk to my friends. So today, we're going to expose the beams, how to brainstorm and design the most viral content you've ever made. So expose beams, let me, let me explain what I'm talking about here. I was writing this presentation, sitting in the distilled offices, and this is what I see. And I'm trying to come up with what's, what's my focus. And I see these exposed beams. And I think, exposed beams didn't always used to be a thing. People covered up with popcorn ceilings. Who absolutely loves popcorn ceilings? I mean, yeah, yeah, I get a hand. Dude, really, really, okay. Um, <laughs> they're, they're now seen as unsightly. They, 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 were, seen, they were seen as unsightly. They, nobody wanted to see the structure of a house. Well, nowadays, they're part of modern beauty. Everybody loves beautiful exposed beams. This is like your data data out there and data that you, that you have within your company. It's functional, but it's also beautiful, and it can make something beautiful. Lots of very beautiful content. OkCupid does this. Who knows and loves the OkCupid blog? I want every hand up at this one, because I love OkCupid. They use their own content and create some of the best blog posts ever. But I do want to go across, I do want to talk about what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about content ideas. I'm not going to cover outreach. I'm not going to cover how to create it because I'm not a designer. I'm going to talk about how to come up with, with the idea. And I'm not just talking about infographics. There are a lot of infographics in this presentation. They're pretty. They're static. I don't have to bother the team in the back with a video, though I love videos. Um, but these two pieces of content were very, very viral. The, the one, the, the news article was a Texas high school. I'm from Texas, hook em horns. Yes. Yes. I, I saw a Longhorn shirt in here. Somebody has a Longhorn shirt in here, and I just want to hug them. Um, a Texas high school wants to make Quidditch an official high school sport. Really? That is fantastic. And what is even better is that the UIL, the University Interscholastic League, is thinking about it. Wow, okay. I, I had to share that one. Texas, Quidditch, I'm a big Harry Potter fan. That one had to be shared. The other one was a Rube Goldberg with photography things. And they integrated um, advertising into that. So they were not only going for the viral traffic, they were going for the sales too. Beautiful, beautiful way to, to use video. But remember, and I'm gonna go over this again, funny doesn't always meet goals. So viral content is not always funny. Good, good content is not always funny. And it's not automatic. When I talk about content here, what I'm really talking about is creating good content. You cannot create viral content. You can't sit down one day and go, okay, I'm gonna create viral content today. That doesn't happen. It's probably not gonna go viral if that's your frame of mind. You want to create great content that people have to share. It's not automatic and it's not duplicative. So you can't make it today and make it two weeks later. And then do it again two weeks later. And then again. It's something that just kind of happens. Create great content and let it speak for you. Or let your PR company or your social media outreach people help you make that content great. So after all that, where do you start? I say a whiteboard and a dream. The first thing you have to determine is who are you talking to? Now, I want you to think about everything, everything under the sun. You need to find a persona, a person that you're talking to, and you wanna get really specific. Not just their name, not just what they do for a living, not their, they're between the ages of 15 and 25 and they're a high school student. That's, that's, that's not what I'm talking about here. You want to find a person. 
and get to know that person. Um, this is a modification of a client's persona. Um, it's an undisclosed client, sorry, the NDA thing, I can't get around that. Um, so I modified some of them, but this is generally what they do. They have a five-page document that outlines who Shelly is, what her hopes, her dreams, what her problems are, what she's looking for, and how the company can help her get to that specific goal. It's wonderfully detailed, and that's what you need to create. You need to know who you're talking to. Take that and find real people, because that'll help you get to know that persona, that person. Um, it'll also help your outreach people later, especially if the people that you come across on Twitter, Facebook, however else, blogs, um, if those are real people, those are people that you'll outreach to later on. Go too far. Go too far, get to the nitty gritty details, and become that person's best friend. Yes, they are your imaginary friend. I want you all to have imaginary friends because you need to know what they love so that you can create something that they love. The second thing you need to do, what's the point? What's the point of what you're doing? You've gotta have goals. Excuse me. You've gotta have goals. If you create content without goals, it's not gonna go anywhere. You have to know what you want to get out of that piece of content and content changes. The type of content you create changes depending on what you want to do. So if you want traffic, awesome. If you want sales, links, mentions, likes, plus ones, love that third sock kind of thing. If you want any of that, you have to know what it is and you have to associate numbers to that. Stuff that develops links are things like the beginner's guide to SEO. We at Distilled link to the Beginner's Guide to SEO all the time. We link to it inside of documents. We link to it in lots of our blog posts. That develops links. Infographics, some of them, some of them can create links as well, but they're largely social. They're the ones that are gonna get you visits, likes, and mentions. So your goals will change the direction of your content. And you have to make these goals very specific. You need to know what your client or your boss wants out of this. And I guarantee you there's always a number surrounding that. One of my, my clients, actually the one with the, the undisclosed client, we actually did an infographic for them. And the infographic, these were their goals. They wanted 200 page views. They wanted 100 new inbound links and a 5% increase in share of voice. Now I don't have data on the share of voice. I couldn't find that, sorry. This was released a few months ago. Um, but they, they achieved all of those every single one of those, and they knew in advance what they wanted to achieve. You also have to know what the point of this piece of content is gonna be. Is it, is it going to be random? Is it going to be something that is just kind of funny and entertaining and will bring you traffic? Is it gonna prove a point? Do you know something that no one else knows right now and you need to make that point to the world? That's also, the point of some of these infographics and pieces of content. And a lot of times we create content for sales purposes. This is largely what your client or your boss are gonna want you to create. This is the hardest to create because that usually is what fits in the box. And what I'm here to talk about today is not fitting in the box, actually jumping outside of that box and getting people's attention. My pro tip for this is Try outreach beforehand, if you're writing, writing an article or getting a guest post. Because if you give the blog owner input on the content, I guarantee you, A, they're gonna like you more, B, they're gonna post it faster, and C, they're much more, um, <laughs> you're gonna be able to put nice links in there. So that is something that you might try. Try finding your goal, like your end target, before you create the content. Okay. So we've talked about, and these are the two biggest points. Who are you talking to, and what is the point of the content you're creating? And that is a number two, I swear. PowerPoint hates me. All right, so number three, brainstorming. This is my favorite part. This is the fun part. This is the absolute, this is gonna be like what our process is. And there are no tools. Well, there's a whiteboard, and a whiteboard marker, and your brain. So start with a marker. Write everything down, and by all means, ask your coworkers and your friends. What happens at Distilled when, when we want to come up with content is we grab two or three people, 
We sit in front of a whiteboard and we write everything down. Everything, nothing is a stupid idea when you're brainstorming. Every single thing. And doodle. Draw arrows, draw pictures. I think this guy has a hot dog with a sword, but I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Okay, so don't believe me. Everybody knows who Matthew Inman is, right? Oatmeal, love him to death, yes. He is a founding mauser. Matthew is, is very well known for having really great viral content. And I grabbed a, a couple quotes from him, so you'll see, see a few of his quotes throughout. I tend to jot everything down, everything I think of with no real regard for structure, and then filter it down later to the good stuff. That's exactly what we're talking about here. There's no secret to brainstorming. You just gotta write everything down. So I can hear all of you right now. Every single one of you going, yeah, I'm not Matthew Inman. I, 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 I can't talk about velociraptors. Cool, I understand that. Um, you're sitting there going, I have clients that are really boring, really, really boring. We have those too. We have lots and lots of those. In fact, I grabbed a couple of the people at Distilled and asked them, hey, so I need a couple of really boring ideas, really boring topics that viral content might need to be created out of. So we listed some, and I'll tell you right now, some of our clients are up there, like literally. Um, and then I asked our salesperson, what is the most boring thing on this list? And she picked out window washing. Okay, so throughout this presentation from now on, I'm gonna give an example of how I go through to find viral content for window washing. So I did exactly that. Wrote down everything that I thought of. Now, your list should be bigger, much bigger, but you guys have to read this and it has to be up on a slide. So, it was, it was a much smaller list. But this is everything under the sun, literally. Windex, summer, sun, sun. I literally meant sun. Um, New York lunch, whole nine yards. So you've got this list. Think about window washing. I mean, as I, I was sitting there going, okay, window washing, great. But look at this. This is an original piece of link bait. This picture has been shown everywhere. And I know these guys are not window washers, but it's kind of the same idea. Up above the world, all sorts of things can happen, lots of bad things can happen, lots of good things can happen, but this is great link bait. Window washing is awesome link bait if you just think about it the right way. So if you're still lost and you still can't come up with any inspiration, like you're just sitting in front of the whiteboard just going, I am, no, nothing, I've got nothing. Think about keyword research. I talk about this a lot, Richard Baxter talked about it a lot. Go look at what your competitors are doing. Go look at what other people are doing. Think of what they're doing and take it a step further or apply it to what you're doing. But don't copy it. Don't, don't sit there and go, oh hey, well my competitor did this, I'm gonna do this exact same thing. That, 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 that doesn't work, that really doesn't fly. If people have seen it before, they've seen it before. It's like somebody trying to do Old Spice again. It's just not gonna happen well. Um, Matt says, go check out Dig, Reddit, Mix, this is a little old, um, but Google Trends. I get a lot of great ideas for articles from Google Trends. Take any of those ideas and apply it to your topic. They can, that can spin out some really great content and a really great, great way of thinking about your content or your product. Visually, just launched. Great place to go see what infographics are out there and what's doing well. Cool infographics. People actually pay this guy to review their infographics. This one is fantastic because you can read his reviews of everything he puts up there. If you wanna know what works and what doesn't, this guy's seen everything and he can tell you what you've done wrong, what, you, what you've done right. Go find your competitors, go see what they've done right and done wrong and learn from it. I'm the youngest child in my family. I did not get in a lot of trouble as a child. Why? Because I learned from my brother. He got in trouble all the time. So you kind of take the same mentality. You go figure out what other people have done, you do it better. And Visual Loop is also a, a good place to keep track of. They're on Twitter. They tweet wonderful things all the time, lots of great infographics. But it's not always competitive. It's definitely not always competitive. This I found when doing research for the whole window washer thing, and it's from a 1934 newspaper. I mean, this looks awesome. It just visually is fantastic. It would be a great idea to do a piece that looks like this and surrounds this and has updated material. You can get inspiration from just about anywhere. But I'm getting ahead of myself. 
way, way, way ahead of myself. We're still in planning stages. We still just have that giant list of words, and we haven't even come up with, with any ideas, so let's not go too crazy yet. Remember always, always keep in mind who you're talking to and what the point is, what the goals are. And we've got your brainstorm. I'm gonna keep going over this, because you know the whole repetition thing kind of gets it into your brain. Yeah, I took marketing classes in school. So now we're down to filtering. So this is what Matt talked about. He calls it brain farming. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys a second to read this because this is hilarious. Um, in Seattle, I don't know if you guys know, but we have to separate our trash. It's mandatory, you get fined if you don't. I love the multiple trash cans. I had to get used to that moving here from Texas because when I leave Starbucks, I have to sit there and look at all the bins and go, wait, wait, where does this go? Wait, not, okay, it's not recycled, it's co composted. That's it, okay, cool. I love this one. Um, Matt, Matt calls it brain farming. Taking everything and narrowing it down and simmering on it and coming up with the idea when you're just out doing something else. This is classic brainstorming. So from my list, these are the most interesting things I came across. So the matrix, um, who knows the, the part where he had to go out to the scaffolding? Yeah, and he drops his phone. Yeah, that's, that's where the matrix came from when I was thinking about window washing. Uh, summer, death, sorry, sorry, I have to get a little morbid there, but what else are you gonna think of when somebody's that high up in the air? I mean, you wonder how many people fall. Um, towers, Donald Trump, New York, summer. Th those are the ones that, 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 that I could kind of play with. And the idea that I initially came up with was saving Neo's phone, how to get to a window washer scaffolding. If you took a company of window washers, showed them that clip and said, how could Neo have gotten to the other side of that giant black divider and gotten over to the scaffolding? How, how could he have saved dropping his phone? That would be really interesting to read. Um, this is more of a getting mentions and getting likes and getting people to talk about it than a links thing, but I think personally fascinating. And when you're coming up with these ideas, kind of filtering it down, would your person share it? Would you share it? if you're thinking of a broader audience. If it's gonna end up looking like this, probably not. Sorry, if one of you made this, I'm really sorry, really, really sorry, but it's just kind of visually, ah. Um, think about if they would share it, but ultimately, you want content that they have to share. You wanna come up with the idea that people can't do anything but share it. This is um, a video that I came across, it's on break.com. Just Google, this is what determination looks like. Um, I've shared it recently. I shared it on Twitter, Facebook, Google+. It was so good. This girl, this I think she's from Michigan, something like that, college runner, 600 meters. Last lap, she falls. She falls right before the last lap. I mean, deadpan on her face. You see her afterwards, she's got a giant cut. She wins by four one hundredths of a second. Girl bolts around this thing and laps everybody. Really brilliant. I couldn't help but sharing that, and that's ultimately what you're going for. You want to find the stuff that is just that good. Now, how do you make stuff that good? Okay. You go for the disgusting, the horrible, the oh my god, cringeworthy sort of things. That does have a tendency to work. We, we, we are humans. I mean, we. People love to share stuff about, and I know you guys are eating dessert, I'm sorry, but eating bugs. Uh, th this was one that, that, that we did, um, I distilled for a client, and it was eating insects because it's more eco-friendly. The thought process was you didn't have to cook the insects, so yeah, um, really nasty, but it worked. You go for the funny, shit my dad says. Notice this is not an infographic. This is just a Twitter feed, and it's brilliant, and it gets shared all the time. Relevant, go look at the Google Trends and see what people are talking about right now and talk about that if it's relevant to what you're talking about. Um, HGH, anti-aging miracle. We had a, a potential client come in through a, 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 about this stuff. We have too many medical things going on. But this is really interesting to people who just don't know what's going on. And the print effect, who's seen this? Anybody seen this? At all? No? Okay. My team has seen this. Okay. Um, the, the print effect. You put in your Twitter handle, and it tells you how much paper, in so many different fashions, how much paper it would take to print out your feed. 
So all of the people you follow plus every tweet you've ever done. That's a lot of paper. But it makes it personal. People love to, things to be about them, all about them. And back to Matt. For me, the best test of whether link bait is effective is if, it's generally, if it genuinely entertains or intrigues me. If I'm not laughing at my own joke, I bag it. Again, going back to the, throughout this entire process, think back to your goals, think back to your person, and ultimately, would you share it? If you, ha if you would not share something, bag it. Come up with another idea, because you're still brainstorming. And I just talked about all that, so I'm gonna keep going. All right, cool. All right, so finding data. So you've got your idea, fantastic. You think it's the best thing in the world, it fits everything that you want, now you've gotta have the data to back it up. Or do you? Because we all know there are some pieces of, of content that really don't, they, they really don't need data to back them up, but a lot of them do. The best data I've come across comes from the places with the best links. Governmental sites and educational sites. Educational sites, naturally, you have lots of professors and master students and uh, d doctoral students doing all kinds of research, marketing research even, health research, everything you can come up with. Somebody is researching right now, and what is gonna happen to that research? It's gonna get bound and put into that school's library, and no one's ever gonna see it again. I know, I started to write a, a, a thesis and I had to go find other people's. Educational uh, institutions are great places to find really good research that no one has talked about. But then again, so are government agencies. They have lots of research, so definitely go check them out. But I know a few of you have probably looked up a few research studies, and they cost a lot of money. Like, we're talking $800 a paper. And with some of your clients and some of your businesses, that really doesn't fly very far. You don't really wanna spend $800 for a fact. Okay, see the little note at the bottom? They're not there to be slave labor. Don't do this just to get research out of them. Don't hire students just to get EDU links out of them. Hire them to teach them, seriously, I'm not kidding, to teach them and train them and make them functional members of the search marketing community. But while you're there, they do have research access to all of this wonderful stuff. So student interns are great for this. That's my little tidbit. The other great place for data, and this is back to the beams, is your data. Foursquare does it all the time. They, they share all sorts of things that they've found out about people as a whole, and they share it, and it makes beautiful infographics, and it makes wonderful stuff for everybody to process. This one was about how you could see spikes and check-ins at movies, depending on what movie was releasing at the time. I mean, it's not earth-shattering things, but they're really interesting. So I can hear you guys saying, and I've heard this from clients, but I can't give away my data. We have privacy concerns. We have, we can't do this, we can't do this, we can't do this. Anonymize your data. Make it big, make it giant. Lock up the actual data so that it's not leaked someday. That would be fantastic. But anonymize it, but actually use your data. And if you don't have data, if you don't have good stuff, you're a lead generation site and you're thinking, no one's gonna care about the couple of leads that I have. Ask them questions. Send them a survey. Get to know your people, because guess what? There are other companies that are just like you that want to talk to who you want to talk to. And those people, your customers, want to know who's like them. And again, they love reading about themselves. Absolutely love it. So make that data happen. I can guarantee you that somehow you can do that. I'm gonna bring back OkCupid. Okay they use their own data to wonderful, amazing success. Amazing. Mint. Talk about data people don't want out there. They know everything about all of their people's, all of their customers' spending habits. And I can guarantee you there are some people in this room that they don't want Mint knowing what they spend money on. They just don't. I mean, really. But Mint has that, and they use that, and they make infographics out of it, and they're fascinating. I'm from Austin, Texas, originally, and it happens to be that Austin is on that list of uh, gas gulpers. I'm from Texas, it's a big state, you have to drive a lot, so it sort of makes sense, but $169 a month on gas. That's, that's a lot of money. Um, so it makes it very relevant and very, very close to them. And sometimes you have the off the wall. I had another off the wall kind of um, piece 
but it was from a client and we couldn't use it. So I had to use the seven reasons to keep your Tyrannosaurus off crack cocaine. Um, I, th this one is a great one of his. Um, even though there isn't really data there, you really do have to have logic in there, even if it's funny. So just definitely keep that in mind, if, even if you're going for the off the wall stuff. And when you're looking for data, here's my pro tip, find the source. Don't trust another infographic. Don't trust um, somebody else. Go look for it, because when you find the source, you are going to find the actual information, what the numbers actually are, and a host of other information you can put in the same piece of content. It's brilliant. So the, um, the information I looked up about window washing, told you we're always gonna come back to that. Skyscraper window cleaners in New York City, this was the 1934 thing, made $30 a week for 48 hours of work. Take that, compare it to what they're making now. Easy, or over time. Uh, the most dangerous item for a window washer is a ladder. I thought that was fascinating. But once I looked it up, it kind of made sense because it's not attached to anything. So it's not anchored down. So they actually try to keep window washers from using ladders because it's more dangerous. I thought that was fascinating. The last thing is so brilliant. I don't, I, I'd never heard about it, but a window cleaner named Jan Dimsker used a squeegee to free himself and five others from an elevator shaft on 9-11. That squeegee is now in the Smithsonian. That's fascinating. I mean, I don't, did anybody in here know that? There's always one hand. Two, two, two hands, okay. Like, dang it, I didn't know that one. That one was fascinating. And talk about a way, a, a piece of data to start off a piece of content. So you're back to who you're talking to. You've got your point, you've got this great idea, you filtered it down, you've got your data. Now you've got to design it. I'm not a designer, I'm going to say this again. We have brilliant designers at, at Distilled and they do, do the designing. So my first rule is to trust your designer. But you do have to give them information to get them to make this content. So you want to make this content simple, very simple. It doesn't have to have a lot of data, it doesn't have to show numbers. This, I'm gonna give you a second to read just a little bit, is really funny, really, really funny. And being in Seattle, I have a lot of friends that work at Microsoft. The Microsoft one is dead on. It just is. Um, they really don't like talking to each other. The, little, the, the, the business units just don't. Um, but this is a very, very simple, very viral piece of content. It was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Powerful. The most boring topic I hear all the time is health. Health-related industry. You can't get anybody to come up with something viral to talk about that. Somebody made something, and I thought it was really interesting. And the top of it talks about the most expensive medical procedures. Now, first of all, you're just like, uh, okay. But then you look at it and you're like, okay, so maybe I'll need a heart transplant someday. That's more than three quarters of a million dollars. Wow, uh, note to self, take care of my heart. All right, cool. So you wanna make it powerful. And that idea needs to be unique. This one I loved, Alice. The things they've, been, they've moved over time. Uh, the one that I loved the most was the uh, Apollo space capsule. They've moved the Apollo space capsule, one of them. That one was fascinating, I guarantee you, None of the other mover, moving companies would ever do this. And it's just really interesting to read about and make it interesting and relevant. This is very sh simple, straightforward, but interesting to me about how many women take the GMAT and the highest paid CEOs in 2009. And there's a host of other data below this. I just picked a little bit of it, but you wanna make it really interesting. So you trust your designer, you keep it simple and straightforward, you've got your idea. We're about done, right? You think we're done. I mean, that's, that's what I was here to talk about. Now you gotta go back. Go back to the top. Take your idea, take what you're about to give your designer. Don't give it to the designer yet. Go back to your first, your first two points. Who are you talking to and what's the point of the content you're creating? Make sure, doubly sure, that what you want to create is not just something that you love. Make sure that it's gonna do what you want it to do, what your client wants it to do, and it meets your goals, because this, this is how you get a raise. This is exactly how you get a raise, is when you can create one piece of content that brings in all of this traffic. So yeah, sorry guys, I get ahead of myself a lot. Going back to the goals. There's your process. I hate putting a process on things like content creation, because it really is about you. It's about your brain, it's about your team, it's about your friends. 
the best ideas come from people who are not related to the product. There's my little tidbit. My mother comes up with great ideas. My mom, she's an elementary principal, and she's just absolutely brilliant because she's not a part of it. Use your brain, use a whiteboard, brainstorm, and think outside of the box. Don't do what everybody else does. Do something different. Get something that is really creative, and I guarantee you that there is something out there surrounding your topic that is creative and interesting. So that's my presentation, but...